All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. We're happy to have you and appreciate your time. My name is Katie Earle, and I'm the coordinator of the University Express program, and I work for the Erie County Department of Senior Services. We're joined here virtually today with Rob Kubiak, who will be our instructor. And before we get to his presentation, I just want to go over a few housekeeping things so we're all on the same page and we all know how to participate since we have some new folks here with us today. First thing I want to let you know is this session is being recorded and we will try to post it online at a later date. Second thing, which I'm sure you've already noticed by now, is you've joined this event without a video of yourself showing and you're muted and can do nothing about that. Want to let you know you haven't done anything wrong. That's just the settings for this presentation. And you might also think that you're the only person in attendance here with us, but I promise you there are other people too. It's just that we're in an anonymous participation mode, so only Rob and I are able to see the complete list of attendees. So what you're looking at on your screen here is a picture that I've previously taken of what may and hopefully does resemble your screen, depending on the device that you've joined us here today with. But we will primarily be communicating through our Q&A feature. So when some of you joined today, that probably popped right up on your screen on the right side and might be up right now. So if you look in my picture in the top right, you'll see I have Q&A in a red circle. You might just have to click on that little arrow or carrot to expand it. If that's not up for you, look at the bottom of my picture in the red box, I have our control panel and we all have one. So you can find that by wiggling your mouse around or poking or touching your screen, depending on your device. And that'll bring it up for you. So for our new folks today, I'm just gonna pause for a second so you can find your control panel. And if you know what you're doing, awesome, and thanks for your patience. So when you see your control panel, and in my picture, there's a blue circle with a square and a question mark in it. That's your Q&A panel button. So you can click on that to bring it up, click on it to take it away. If you don't see that specific button, you can click on the button with the three dots, because that's going to give you more options, and then you should be able to select your Q&A. So I'm just gonna pause for another second here. Let you bring that up. Hopefully you found it. So in my picture, you'll see I have a red arrow that points down to ask all panelists. That's the default and you can leave that alone because that's going to come right to Rob and I. And then below that in my picture, you'll see a text box where you can click your mouse or touch it, type in your question and click send. Again, this may look a little different depending on your device, but it should be pretty similar. So Again, we're in anonymous participation mode, so only Rob and I are going to see your name attached with your question and comment. To everybody else, it's just going to look like a question or comment to nobody, or from nobody, rather. Don't forget to click send, though, or else it's just going to be hanging out there. And we'll pause throughout Rob's presentation to field the questions and comments. But when you think of something, type it in right away. We're also going to be using a polling feature. so. When I activate a poll, it's gonna pop right up on your screen. You can choose to participate and then click submit. We'll wait about a minute or so and for all the results. And once we have those, we'll talk about them and we'll keep it moving. So have fun, we hope you participate. This is going to be really engaging and we're all excited for this to happen. I'd like to thank the sponsors of our University Express program, which is my Department of Senior Services, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, Excelsior Orthopedics and Wegmans because they help make this program possible. And you know that Senior Services is always here for you. If you have questions about programs, services, benefits, or support, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We can be reached at 858-8526. And without further ado, I will introduce Rob to you. With over 20 years of leadership experience and creative problem solving facilitation, Rob brings out of the box ways to overcome challenges using proven techniques. Rob has led teams and worked with organizations as a successful change agent. He resides in Orchard Park with his wife and three daughters, and I'm really excited to have him here today. So Rob, I'll turn it over. Great, thank you so much, Katie. I just wanna make sure you could hear me okay. I can awesome, hear you. great. So I just uh, wanna thank everybody for joining us today, and hopefully you'll be able to 
importance of reading and book clubs. I uh, just wanted to start off with a quick quote. Books give a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. And it's really, obviously, through books, we're able to learn so much more and take um, everything into consideration as far as how we can learn uh, more about each other, our cultures, our environment, and everything. So, moving ahead, this is obviously the title of our presentation, The Book Clubs and the Health Benefits of Reading. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to start off by, um, one, you know, I wanted to see if anybody recognizes this face. Um, he is a well-known author uh, th throughout the world, and um, I want to talk for a minute about what he had to say at a uh, commencement address just about, it was 12 years ago. So this is David McCullough. David McCullough wrote some of the, you know, best books uh, and historical books that we've had, including The Wright Brothers, The Pioneers, which is his most recent selection, 1776, and John Adams. And I wanted to share with you a few of the words that he had to say. This is 12 years ago at the commencement address at, the, at Boston College uh, University. He wrote this book called The American Spirit, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but I have a copy of it in front of me as well. And he talked to the students that were graduating back in May of 2008. He said a few things. When he set out to write the life of John Adams, I wanted not only to read what he and Abigail wrote, but to read as much as possible of what they read. We're all what we read to a very considerable degree. So think about that for a minute. We're all what we read to a very considerable degree. And I want you to think a little bit right now of some of the things that you're reading on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's uh, news sites, whether it's uh, fiction, whether it's nonfiction, um, and think about that a little bit. He went on to say, I gotta move my face here, make the love of learning central to your life. What a difference it can mean if your experience is anything like mine, the books that will mean the most to you, books that will change your life are still to come. And remember, as someone said, even the oldest book is brand new for the reader who opens it for the first time. Now, he went on to say many other great things during this particular commencement address, but I picked out a few of the quotes just to kind of put us in the right mindset and think that, you know, no matter what your age, whether you're 23, 45, 63, or 89, um, as someone said, even the oldest book is brand new for the reader who opens it for the first time. So you still have a lot of chances to uh, open up those new books and learn something new. So no matter your age, you could become an avid reader. There are multiple health benefits of reading, which we'll learn about during the presentation, and book clubs can encourage further reading um, throughout your life, not just now, but throughout your entire life. So I figured maybe we could start with a quick poll, and Katie, if you're okay with it, we could start with this initial poll. So how many hours per week do you currently read? Is it less than one hour? Is it one to three hours, four to six hours, or more than six hours? And this is, once again, per week. So we could, now that the poll is opened, you know, I just wanted, we could touch back on the poll results in a few slides unless I wanted to wait. It's up to you, Katie. Okay. I'm gonna add here, I'll do mine, and I'm gonna hit submit. Very good. And we can come back to those results in just a few minutes here. So uh, as Katie mentioned, uh, I'm Rob Kubiak. I'm the president of the Buffalo Men's Book Club. Ironically, we're going to be meeting tonight. Uh, we're actually going to have a socially safe, socially distant uh, meeting at a friend's house. I'll talk about just really quick how we started, who we are, what we read, you know, where we meet, and how do we do it, and why it works. And this kind of will set the tone a little bit for uh, the second part of our presentation. So this is a picture of our bookshelf. We've read a, a few, I think we're on our 70, 76th selection since the time we began. And how did it start? So that's my family. And I wanted to just give a shout out to my wife, Eileen, my oldest daughter, Claire, uh, my middle daughter, Elise, and my youngest daughter, Vivian. 
And it's really uh, through their inspiration that I was able to kind of establish this book club and what we've done. And thinking back of when it was established, it was probably about December of 2009. It might have been, who knows, Thursday the 10th around there. And I was home one night, probably rocking my daughter Elise to sleep because she was would have been about two years old. And I was reading, I think, Goodnight Moon, which is a very popular book for new parents. And my wife was out at her own book club. And I, so I had this idea, you know, I like to read. Um, I want to meet with my friends. I'm going to start a book club and I'm going to we're going to call it the Buffalo Men's Book Club. So that's kind of how the idea originated. We had our first meeting in January or February of 2010. So this is our 10th year and we've been going strong ever since. So this is who we are. That's me on the upper middle part of your screen. My brother-in-law, Kevin, is sitting next to me. My friends, Mike and Doug and Bob and Sean and Ben. And this is a picture that was taken at the Blackthorn restaurant uh, a few years ago when the, there was a story uh, that ran in the Buffalo News Magazine. So they came out, we did a quick photo shoot. It was, it was a fun, uh, fun little uh, photo shoot. And we were featured, like I said, in the Buffalo News Magazine. And this was just a couple snippets, but just looking at the last paragraph there, you know, we, we really have thoughtful discussions around literature. It's funny because over the years when we would talk about people to when we would talk to people about the Buffalo Men's Book Club, their first response is, you're in a guy's book club, what do you do, just sit around and drink? Well, that's part of it, I'll, I will admit, but it's really about good, thoughtful discussion about literature. And so, uh, like I said, we've been going strong, we're gonna be meeting again tonight and uh, looking forward to today's discussion. So what do we read? Here's a quick snippet. Our first book that we ever read was The Great Gatsby. And you can kind of see some of the other titles that uh, are fiction, fictional books that we read, The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy. And the reason I wanted to put up this particular slide or the next few slides is because who knows, some of you that are listening or watching this right now, you might have even read some of these books. Deliverance, My Man Jeeves, Murder in the Cathedral. Some of them are classics. Um, Around the World in 80 Days, 1984, which is kind of a very relevant book in today's day and age. Uh, the Cannery Row by John Steinbeck. Um, Frankenstein, which is a great book uh, by Mary Shelley. Uh, we've read some Jack London, uh, Hunter S. Thompson, uh, Hemingway with Farewell to Arms. So you can kind of, and Breakfast with, at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. And so we've we've been, We've had a really great number of uh, books that we've read. Heart of Darkness, Tale of Two Cities. Uh, some of these we're rereading again for the second time around because uh, we might have read them in high school for one reason or another. Uh, one of my favorite books on the screen is The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Um, C.S. Lewis, was he's well known in children's uh, circles for writing The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe in the Chronicles of Narnia, but he did write a number of Christian books and the screw tape letters is one of my favorite. Uh, it's, I'm not sure if you've read it, but it's a very satirical look at the dynamic between good and evil. And so um, really a, a fun book, learn a lot by it. Here, here are some of our nonfiction books. Teddy Roosevelt uh, was up there, Make Your Bed, which is a great uh, story from a commencement address uh, by General William McRaven. Uh, talking about things like, uh, you know, when you wake up in your morning, make your bed. It's the first thing that you could do, and at least you'll have accomplished at least one thing on that particular day. So there was a good message in that book. Uh, Failure is Not an Option who by Gene Krantz, who was the, um, he was director of mission control uh, for NASA during the initial launch of, you know, the Apollo, um, Apollo rockets. And uh, you might have seen him on screen um, portrayed by Ed Harris in the in the movie Apollo 13. Um, so that was a really great kind of a leadership uh, book. Uh, we've read Quiet. Quiet is a story about, uh, you know, the dynamics of um, extroverts and introverts and the, and the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. We've read some Malcolm Gladwell. Um, thank you for your service. You can kind of see there some of our nonfiction books. And then these are just some of our recent books. Um, we read some Stephen King, The Alchemist, which was a great little story, On the Road by Jack Kerouac. 
uh, man search for meaning. And then the last one there, the bigger one is Voltaire, this, uh, this um, book called Candide, which is actually the book that we're, we're going to be discussing tonight. So where do we meet uh, and where can you meet is the consideration. Um, I'm going to just bounce there. Hey, actually, before we get on, Katie, did we get any poll responses with the number of hours that we read per week? We did. Great. Do you see them? Um, oh, wait, hold on a second. Ah, yes, more than six hours. Okay, great. So it uh, looks like we have one to three hours. There was one, four to six. There's a little bit and then more than six hours. That's phenomenal. That is great news to see that we're reading and reading often. All right, so getting back to the presentation, where do we meet? This is the inside of um, downtown at Gabriel's Gate, and this is a place that we've often gone. Uh, you can see where that's the, the fireplace, but when you're choosing to be meet with a book club, for those of you that are in a book club, uh, what type of table should you select? You know, there are the squares, the rectangular ones, and then of course there's the round ones. And so what I like to say to anyone that's considering to start a book club, for better sound, choose the round, all right? So if you're going out for uh, dinner, well, a lot, not a lot of us are going out these days, but when the time comes, if you decide to meet with your book club um, at a restaurant, or even if you're at a home, uh, sometimes when you're getting together in a circular table, it's much better because then everybody can hear it and it's just better conducive to sound. So how do we do it? This is how we do it. Of course, you select the book, you read the book with an asterisk there. I'll get to that in a second. You figure out a date, select the venue. We oftentimes will go to different establishments um, throughout the city of Buffalo or Western New York. Tonight is a little bit different because of uh, current COVID-19, but so we're meeting in the backyard of somebody's house, uh, one of our members' houses. You know, right, you arrange transportation. Sometimes you might, might want to get dropped off gather sit we do this thing called around the horn and basically what that is uh you may be very well do the same thing but we actually have this built into our our bylaws um but we go around the table and we just ask all right what's going on in your life tell us a little bit about what's on your mind before we get into the book discussion you know for guys this could be anything from what's going on in our career professionally you know, some of the challenges that we're facing with raising a family, um, you know, it could be anything. So we use that time this around the horn time to to let everybody know kind of this is where we're at. It's a very safe space. And so all of us are feel feel very open to talk about it. And I would hope the same is true for you with your own book clubs. If you decide to get together and and talk about those things, you know, if we're out at a restaurant, we'll order food and beverages. And then we'll start the official meeting. Um, sometimes we wait until we're a little bit done with our meal. Uh, at the conclusion of our meeting, we will rate the, the book itself. Uh, so the book selection, uh, we'll rate the discussion, and these are on a scale of one to 10. And then of course, we'll select the, we'll, we'll rate the venue. And I think we added one more since I worked on this presentation, and that was we rate our server. And so what we're going to be doing moving forward is uh, at the end of every year, uh, we might reach out to the establishment and say that you were the best uh, establishment for the Buffalo Men's Book Club and so and so was the best server, uh, because that is important is that, you know, when you're out and enjoying and you're having a discussion around uh, books and, you know, you need to be served drinks occasionally um, responsibly. Uh, so those are some of the things that we rate uh, when we meet. And then, of course, before we end the meeting, we announce the next selection, which is very important to give enough time for everybody. The way that we um, the way that we go about choosing the selection is that we rotate it. So right now, there's seven of us that are on this uh, that are on in the Buffalo Men's Book Club, uh, and we just rotate it on a month to month or every six to eight week basis. Uh, sometimes it's tougher to get together over the summer. Um, so we might have a little bit more time, but usually uh, everybody that's in the club can at least pick once or two times per year a selection and we just rotate it. Uh, for some book clubs, it's a, it goes by vote. Uh, for other book clubs, it's just one person that gets to decide 
uh, but we are a democratic book club. And so we all share the responsibility of selecting the next book. And then of course, you got to pencil in some dates just to mark it on your calendar for, for when you could do it. Um, what we do is we collect dues uh, and fees. So dues are $10 every time that we meet. Fees might be something like if you didn't read the book, you owe 10 bucks. Or, you know, um, I think we've we've done uh, things where if you miss the last meeting, you owe ten dollars. Uh, so we kind of put a little um, there's some responsibility and there's a, you know, it hurts your pocketbook a little little bit if you don't read the selection or if you um, choose not to go to a meeting. Now, of course, things come up travel, food or not not food, but travel. Um, your job might prevent you from doing it, but uh, what we've been able to do over the course of the past um, 10 years is we've built up a nice little bank account. And from time to time, we'll donate some of our uh, funds toward worthy causes. Uh, we just donated some monies toward the Connor Long Foundation, which is based out of Hamburg uh, in memory of one of uh, the members' uh, nephews who tragically lost his life. Um, but they were putting together meals for um, essential workers that are working at hospitals. Uh, we we donated you know a couple hundred bucks towards that. So we're able to do those things with our dues or our fees. You know, of course, you pay the bill, you tip the server. And the asterisk that I wanted to include there was it's highly recommended to pick a plan date each month. For instance, the first Thursday of the month, and that's what we try to do. And this way, everybody can plan accordingly. And the other asterisk, the one that I have there about read the book. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but sometimes uh, we have the ability to listen to the book as well. And um, as long as you complete it in one fashion or another, we're happy. Those are our pint glasses. I'm actually drinking out of that pint glass some water right now, but that's the one thing that we do to, to kind of make it fun is um, we've got pint glasses before. I've got a t-shirt that I'm wearing, the Buffalo Men's Book Club. We've got some some coffee mugs here. Uh, so I've done some, uh, as, as kind of the person that's responsible for the book club and what we do, I've made it fun and you could do the same thing. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. Come up with a name. If you get together with a group of friends for book club, come up with a name for your club. Maybe you can get a t-shirt, maybe you can get a pen or something else and make it fun. And that's what we've tried to do over the course of the years. You know, why it works, everyone's committed you know we're and and that's a challenge sometimes when you're when you're uh with uh, some people that you may or may not know not everyone is always committed but we are committed um it's something that we can all look forward to i can honestly say that we all love to to get together we keep it fun and interesting with the selections um it's kept top of mind so like i said whether it's a pint glass a coffee mug a t-shirt a notebook uh, we like to kind of uh, keep it top of mind with some of those promotional materials. Our wives roll their eyes around them uh, every time that we bust them out, but that's that's the fun part about it. And uh, for us in particular, it has become more than a book club. It's become a brotherhood. And the same might be true for you, whether it's all women, a sisterhood, whether it's all men, a brotherhood, or if you've got a mixed group of men and women, it's just a good group to get together and it's a good bonding experience. So going through the course objectives, what are we going to talk about? We'll talk about some areas of interest. Uh, we will talk about, we're going to learn about the health benefits of reading, understand the positive aspects of reading with a group of people, why it's important to have a reading plan, review, we'll take action, and of course, we'll try to have some fun over the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so. So who reads more? This isn't an actual poll that we are, are gonna post, but who reads more? What do you think? Is it women? Is it men? Is it children? You know, who do you think reads more? And I can tell you this, in 2017, people in the US 15 years and older spent an average of 16.8 minutes a day reading. That's not including for work or school, according to a survey by the Bureau of Labor St Statistics. That's down from 22.8 minutes in 2005 and that number has probably gone down even more so over the past three years women women read more than men so almost 20 minutes per day compared to about 13 
and men's reading time declining more quickly than that of women. Those in the United States aged 20 to 34 read the least with an average of only 6.6 .6 minutes per day with teenager, teenagers reading 1.8 minutes more. Those that are age 75 and older read the most with an average of 51 minutes per day, which is awesome. Um, you know, and the thing is too, is that when you think about reading, what does const what constitutes reading? Because if you're on social media, of course you could be watching videos, but you're reading then, but is that really technically reading? Um, I guess it would be, but I think what this, these statistics, which are from the Bureau of Labor, um, I think they really account for in-depth type of reading, like reading literature or lead, reading books, um, whether fiction or nonfiction. According to the Pew Research Center, 24% of U.S. adults surveyed in 2018 hadn't read even part of a book in the past year. So for me, uh, being on this presentation and knowing that a good number of you that are listening in right now are reading more than six hours per week, I think that's phenomenal. And what I would do is I would charge you to encourage your other friends or your family members or grandparents or grandkids, uh, anyone else to start to read more. And uh, because we need to turn around these statistics as, mu as much as we can. Just thinking about statistics again, uh, particularly for kids, there was a study of K through 12 student uh, reading habits that demonstrated just six extra minutes of reading per day can turn a struggling reader into one who meets or surpasses their grades benchmark. And those students who read 15 minutes or more per day, about 46% of students made accelerated reading gains. So that's so important with children. Uh, if you've got children or grandchildren that are in school, uh, for them to uh, learn to love to read. We're talking about, once again, these statistics, third graders who are proficient are reading almost five times more likely to graduate from high school than their peers with below basic reading skills. And 82% of sixth graders who fail in English class don't graduate high school. And you can read on the other statistics about, you know, 62% of children, so on and so forth. The main idea behind this particular slide, children need to read. They need to read more and you should do all that you can to encourage reading with your children or grandchildren uh, or anyone else. So what types of books interest you the most? And you just think about this. And uh, I added this next slide. If anybody recalls um, pulling out the drawers of the uh, index cards in the library, I know I had this when I was growing up in school, but this is the old Dewey Decimal System. So the way that the Dewey Decimal System was created uh, was to categorize books for, for libraries. And you could see, um, looking at this particular screen, you know, even now when you go to the library, especially when it comes to uh, nonfiction books, um, they're categorized by the Dewey numbers ranging from um, 000, all the way down to 999. And of course, you could see the main categories, philosophy, psychology, language, technology, literature, history, geography, all those different things. And the way that you could look at it is, you know, if you're considering a book like that, those are some of the questions that it might answer for you. Um, for those that are uh, in libraries, as you may well, very well know, um, Fiction books are categorized by the author's last name. Uh, so when you go to a library, uh, if you're looking for a particular uh, fiction book, it's usually categorized by the last name of the author. So think about a little bit, you know, and I'm going to pose the question later on in the presentation, what are some of your preferences when it comes to uh, books? Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And when I'm when I was delivering this presentation actually in person, we had a little give and take as far as some of the books that people like to read. So this is just a little bit different, which is fine. Uh, so looking at the health benefits of reading. Now, there's a ton of them, but we'll talk about them. And I often ask the question when I'm with a group, but it improves your brain functioning and helps with your memory. As, you, as we get a little bit older, 
Um, you know, I'm 43 years old. Um, you know, I'm getting, of course, a little bit older, but I noticed that the more I read, the more I stay um, on top of things. And it does help with my memory, especially when it comes to cognition and knowing and understanding and comprehension of, of what you're reading. It does improve your brain functioning. And that's so important as we all get a little bit older. It feeds our emotional intelligence. So if you're not sure what emotional intelligence is, it's really your ability to um, pick up on things that might be happening in another person's life, even if you're not, even if they're not outwardly talking about it, um, so that you can emotionally uh, pick up those signs that they might be giving. Um, and that's what emotional intelligence is really. It's, it's, it's getting into the knowing and understanding the emotions of other people. And that could come from any different type of reading. Um, it, of course, it improves your vocabulary. Uh, some of the, what I like to do sometimes is, you know, whether I have a, a device that I'm reading from or I'm reading from a hard, hard copy book, I like to keep a dictionary close by. Uh, and if I don't know or understand a word, I'll look it up right away and then I have a new word that's part of my vernacular. Um, so it improves your vocabulary. You learn about the world and different cultures, different events in history. That's just kind of a given thing. You know, whatever you read, it could be on ancient Chinese philosophy. It could be on um, the American Civil War. You learn about the background of some of the things that were happening during this particular during those particular times in, in history. And you can it gives you the better understanding of what maybe groups of people were going through. And so you, you learn about the world when you're picking up, especially historical books. It improves your writing skills. So if you like to write or if you want to write more, uh, I would encourage you that, um, you know, for those that are already reading a good number, start writing, you know, journal. Uh, write a letter to somebody um, and not just, you know, you don't necessarily just have to type something away, you know, pick up a pen and notepad and, and actually do some writing. I think there there's some value in that versus just typing all the time. It stimulates your creativity. It reduces overall stress, depending on what you're reading, of course. I mean, you, people might read news sources and it could increase your stress, but um, if you stay away from some of those current event type of um, topics, it will reduce your stress, especially if you're reading for leisure. Um, it improves your critical thought. And that's the last part of that slide. So those are some of the health benefits of reading. And, and I'm going to get into a little bit more uh, on a few more slides. But why do you want to read with a book club? So another just kind of posing it out there, what are some of the benefits of reading? in a book club? Is it A, boosting teamwork, B, improving writing, C, gaining new friends, or D, all of the above? And if this is a pretty simple question that I pose to the groups, but of course it is all the above. Um, it's improving your teamwork, your writing, gaining new friends, and of course all of the above. This is another poll question that I'll ask Katie to post if you can, which is what prevents you from reading more? Now you're already reading a good, good amount per week, but is it A, busy with other activities? Uh, is it B, television or other screens or just not enough time in the day? So we'll give that a few minutes to um, for people to respond and then we'll continue on with our presentation. So why reading with a book club? When you're reading with a group of people, it really gives you that push that you might need to finish a book. A lot of times I've picked up books and I've read the first couple chapters and then I set it down. Oh, and then, uh, you know, another couple of weeks later, I might read another chapter and then set it down. And then eventually I might not even finish the book. But when you're reading with a book club, you don't want to be that person that shows up at your book club and, and is like, well... I didn't finish the book, uh, but I still want to participate in the discussion. You could do that, of course, but you're really contributing much, much more when you finish the book. And so when you're reading with a group of people, it might give you that added push to finish a selection, even if it's not something that you would generally pick up and read on your own. 
We talked about decreasing stress. You know, when you're reading with a group of people and you're talking and your interpretation about what you read, it can help to decrease your overall stress. Of course, you can gain new friends and get involved with the community. Um, whether, you know, if you might be um, living in uh, uh, by yourself or whether you're living with in an apartment community, uh, for those that are not currently in a book club, and I would, you know, certainly propose that you consider it, you can meet new people and of course, get involved with that community. It gives you new perspectives. So um, a lot of times uh, I've gotten into discussions at book club where I interpreted something completely different from another friend who interpreted something completely different from somebody else. So it just gives us a deeper appreciation for um, the context of what we've read and, and what we're getting out of it, but it gives you new perspectives on um, on things when you're listening and sharing what you've read with others. Like I said, you're, you're collectively reading together as a group, as a team, and you wanna have a great discussion so it improve, improves your teamwork skills. It's, it's good for those that are retirement age. Um, you may be retired yourself or on the verge of retiring. Um, it's really great to, to meet with a group of people um, as you get a little bit older. We talked about better your own writing skills. And of course there's food, food and drinks. Of course, you can't have one without the other. I mean, I guess you could, but what fun is that? So those are some of the things. Now, I'm gonna talk for a minute about reading plans and what that means. Um, so, and we have a few minutes left on the poll, unless, do we have enough results on the poll, Katie? You think? Yeah, I think everyone wants to participate. All right, so do you wanna post those results? All right. Busy with other activities is one. Tell okay, we looks like the most was just not enough time in the day. All right. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that because it's a good segue into reading plans. What are reading plans? They keep you disciplined in your reading. It helps you push to get through books you might not, other, not otherwise have the gumption to finish. Uh, it greases the reading wheels a bit and it creates room for mastery of a subject. And finally, it provides a sense of accomplishment when you actually work at a plan and you execute the plan. So looking at the next month, which is the month of July, can't believe that next week is already gonna be, a week from Saturday is gonna be the 4th of July. But if you were to take a look at the month itself and create your own reading plan and say, well, on Friday and Saturday, I'm, I'm gonna have a day off. I'm gonna read for 15 minutes and then 30 minutes. The next week, you know, you might add a little bit more to each of those particular days. And who knows, if you read for, for 10 to 15 minutes per day, you can increase that even further. And you can kind of see, it's basically a reading plan is just trying to identify the number of minutes or even the number of pages that you wanna read. I like to, I like to dissect my reading plan by minutes. So this is just kind of a quick snapshot of the month of July. If you were to read on those particular minutes, each of those particular days, and then if the average reading speed is 200 to 250 words a minute in non-technical material, that's roughly two minutes per page. If you had that reading plan for the month of July, as I had on the previous slide, that's about 600 minutes. <clears throat> so 600 minutes divided by two minutes per page is 300 pages. And by the end of July, you'll have read 600 minutes or 10 hours, or basically it's at least the average, the average length of a particular book. So thinking about reading plans, trying to put some goals out there as far as reading x amount of minutes per day can only uh, help you increase that and hopefully um, by having a reading plan it will help to divide your day up and hopefully uh, be able to set aside a little bit more time to get some reading done so it's the summer officially as of last weekend it's the summer 
figure we talk for a minute about summer reading. <clears throat> and this is just kind of posing the question out there. What are some of the books that are on your summer reading list? Um, you know, take for a minute and we can open the open up the uh, discussion towards the end of the presentation. But what are some of the books that are on your summer reading list? And I thought about this and I thought, well, I looked at Barnes and Noble. If you wanted to go to look at the latest and greatest uh, summer reading list, Barnes and Noble actually has a really good site. I would encourage you to take a look at it. They've got it um, marked at the bottom there. You can see adults, teens and young adults. You've got kids. Uh, celebrity and celebrity and author recommendations and then summer reading deals. So Barnes and Nobles um, has a great site that you can kind of take a look at what everyone else is reading. And if you're still not sure where to look, there are some other sources online that I took a look at even today. Of course, the New York Times has always been publishing the top reading books, fiction and nonfiction, USA Today, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times. I mean, you know, it could be really any other type of or, uh, organization, but um, sometimes you might see the same books showing up on any of those particular news sites. Uh, but I would encourage you to just basically Google, you know, what are some of the current reading, current summer reading lists. Uh, I think this is the, this might be the last poll question that I have. And the question is, how do you prefer to read books? Is it a hard copy book? Is it on a tablet or an iPad or a computer? Or is it listening to an audiobook? So is it a hard copy book? Is it on a tablet or an iPad or, or a computer? Or is it listening to um, an audiobook? And I'm gonna add my submission right there. And we'll come back to this in just a minute or two. Some food for thought as we wrap things up. The time that someone wastes on social media, and I'm not saying that this is anybody here on this particular um, uh, webinar, but in general, the time that people waste on social media can be used to read 200 books every year. I don't, I mean, I, that's a lot of books. But if an average person spends over 600 hours on social media per year and over a thousand hours watching TV, I mean, that's, that's a lot. But whatever, whatever the benefits of social media may be, 600 hours or over one and a half hour per day is still a lot of time to waste scrolling through your newsfeed. And of course, we're in an election year and it can be really aggravating um, on social media, depending on who your, you know, who your friends are, what's showing up on your feed. But if you put aside social media, even if you just try it for one day or one week uh, and pick up using some of that time to actually reading a book, you could you could actually crank out quite a few books each year. And this is once again, you know, talking about the health effects of screen time in children. You know, there was a study that recently came out. This is uh, something that showed up on 60 Minutes. And as you can imagine, um, you know, really some very bad side effects of screen time with kids. Now kids, uh, I have three daughters, as you saw on the earlier slide, but um, they do get a Chromebook. Um, it is a challenge, but if you have a dedicated, if you got disciplined time for them to actually put down screens and spend that time reading, once again, I would encourage that with your children or grandchildren as well. Some final food for thought, and I'm throwing these up there. Book readers were shown to have a 20% reduction in risk of mortality over 12 years compared to non-book readers. <clears throat> and this advantage was significantly greater than for those who only read newspapers or magazines. And I'm putting these statistics all up here at once because you know, you could sound really smart once you blurt out some of these statistics with your next gathering. Um, a 2001 study showed that people who participate in mental activities like reading puzzles or chess might be two and a half times less likely to develop Alzheimer's than those who don't engage in much mental stimulation. And finally, a study done seven years ago showed that early life cognitive activity like reading and late life cognitive activity reduce cognitive decline by 14%. And so basically what that means is, you know, the more you read, the healthier your mind is. And of course, as we all get a little bit older, you wanna keep a young mind and a growth mindset. And so I would encourage that through more reading 
And once again, for those that are on, that are still on, the, on this webinar, to encourage reading to your friends, even if they don't like to read, just it always helps. So of course, what does all of this mean? R E D D. Read, of course, and a lot of in what I'm, I'm really kind of um, re-energized to hear that so many of you that are on this webinar today are reading for more than six hours a week. That's phenomenal. And I would encourage you to stretch that even a little bit further if you can and encourage those who aren't reading to read a little bit more. So some of the things that are on my personal bookshelf, just as we wrap things up, <coughs> I try to spend a few minutes with scripture each day just to kind of get my, my head on straight and, and, re, and refocus. Um, I do like to learn things. So the, a lot of these might be um, nonfiction selections. Um, and uh, so that was some of my personal bookshelf. This I kind of threw up there. This is a neat little story. Um, we read a book a couple years ago called Last Child in the Woods. Once again, going back to the effects of less and less exposure to nature for children. And what does that mean? You know, even things, you know, what, what I learned by reading this particular book was even something like um, as more and more people got central air conditioning, whether they, wherever they were living or working, this is back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Now it's like you can't go anywhere without central air. Well, people wanted to stay inside more and they weren't going out into nature. And there's so many benefits of spending time with nature whether you're going for a walk in the park or going fishing. And um, the book itself was talking about how uh, we as a society can, can do some very practical things that give children more exposure to nature. And that was, that's a group of us. We met at, at my friend's uh, garage and we reached out to the author uh, via Twitter and he uh, got back to us and said he was really encouraged that uh, we were reading it as a book club and, um, was excited about uh, what we had to say about it. And this is kind of another funny thing that came up a couple years ago. Um, Michelle Obama was speaking in Toronto because she was just releasing a new book. And I had a co friend, a co worker friend who was at the event, and somebody asked Michelle Obama, Well, have you had any men review your book, men, men's book clubs? And she said, I don't know any. So, um, my friend came back and she sent uh, a Twitter message to uh, Michelle Obama and was promoting our book club. But um, so that's just a fun, fun part of it. But this is our last selection. We'll be talking about it today, which is Voltaire by Candide. Um, I uh, finish it today and sometimes I'm, I do procrastinate at times, but I did push through to get it done. Uh, but this was a very satirical look um, about one man's um journeys uh throughout life and uh his philosophy or mindset when it comes to um optimism and things happening for a reason it's it was really kind of a neat little book wasn't that long maybe 150 pages uh, but once again as we talk about summer reading um it could be a little bit challenging at times but just to publish the last poll results if you don't mind katie all right, looks like the preference would be a hard copy book, but just right behind it is a tablet or an iPad. So yeah, for me personally, I like reading a hard copy book. Um, we've had, it said 40% of the results were hard copy, 29% were on a tablet or an iPad. And then um, there was a few that didn't have a chance to answer, but I prefer hard copy books because it allows me to write on the sides and underline and take notes. Uh, you can do the same too with other with other means, but I do like having a physical hard copy of a book. Uh, so that was good. And once again, this is just kind of reviewing the course objectives. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit today about reading and the health benefits of reading and book clubs. And I don't know if Katie, we wanted to, um, do we allow like anybody to submit any questions or how do you want to wrap things up? Yeah. If people have questions or if they want to type in their favorite book in the Q&A, that would be awesome. Cool. 
Yeah, once again, I want to thank Katie, first of all, uh, for putting this together and um, being such a great uh, person for the Erie County Department of Senior Services and doing all these presentations and making sure that we're able to still <clears throat> share information, even if we can't be in close personal contact. I think that this is phenomenal. So congratulations and thank you to Katie for that. Um, thank you for all that participated in today's session. Uh, it is a beautiful day outside, so I applaud you for uh, taking some time to learn, learn a little bit more, and uh, hopefully you did a little bit today. And um, I'm excited because I got to talk about something that I love to do, which is reading and uh, getting together to talk about books. And um, I'm looking forward to tonight's discussion um, when I get together with the guys. So. We do have a, a website if you wanted to go and check it out. It's just buffalomensbookclub.org. If you had any questions um, or think, thoughts or anything, you could email us at the Buffalo Men's Book Club at Gmail. That's my phone number. If you, you can always call me, you can text me if you want and send me some information. But um, uh, that's uh, that kind of wraps things up. So if there's no questions, then um, I think that's probably concludes today's presentation. I think you were muted, Katie.